Okay, so last section we're going to look at this week, uh, law of cosines. And it can be used to solve two types of triangles we haven't talked about yet. Uh, what, are the, what are the three that we have done? Yep. Right triangle. Uh, so looking for like the A's and S's. Oh. In terms of those letters. Angle side angle, side side angle. Angle side angle, side side angle. And angle side 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 angle angle. Right? No. Well, side angle side. So side angle side we have not done. That's going to be today. So what's the what's the third one? Side angle angle. Side angle angle. <laughs> you just said that. <laughs> so or angle angle side. This is the one that you have to be careful because you can end up with the three, three different cases. So let's look at this one. Okay, I'm not going to solve this right away. I am going to write it down again, I think. So if you don't write it right now, it's fine. It's going to be our first example. But what's different about the way the information is laid out in this table compared to all the other problems we've done? Yeah, you don't have a full row. Right, we don't have a full row. So if you use law of signs, you need to pick two rows in this table, and you can only be missing one thing. Well, if you pick the first two rows, how many things are you missing? Two. One. Uh, two each. Two. One, one each. What are the two things you're missing? The two angles. Two angles. So that's not going to work. All right. Then let's try the second two rows. Um, what are you missing if you pick the second two? C and beta. C and beta. That's not going to work. All right, then let's try to use the first row with the last row. What are you missing in those rows? C and, C and alpha. So no matter which two rows you pick, you're always missing two things. Law of science isn't going to work. Okay. This is an example of a side angle side problem. Whether you have side angle side or side side side, you don't have a full row in your table. Okay, so law of cosines can be used on these two types of problems. Now, sometimes when you start a problem with law of cosines, you can finish it with law of sines. I, I generally avoid doing that because of something that can happen. So if I start a problem with law of cosines, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish it with law of cosines. So any questions on what the two types of triangles are that we're working with today? Okay. So a lot of signs is going to use the same vari a lot of cosines, same variables we're used to using. The A, the B, and the C are going to represent the sides. The alpha, the beta, and the gamma will be the angles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, one way you can write the law of cosines. And just like what I talked about in the homework, the exact letters that you use, that's not important. Okay? If you want to stick with A, B, and C, you can. But if you wanted to use you know, PQR, XYZ, yeah, the, the letters don't matter. It's the pattern of the letters. Okay. So here's the pattern to law of cosines. And it starts out looking kind of like something you already know. Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. It starts out looking like Pythagorean theorem. But we know Pythagorean theorem only works on what kind of triangle? Right, right triangle. It only works on a right triangle. These aren't right triangles. So it's the Pythagorean theorem with something subtracted on the end. So it's once, I'm not even going to use letters when I say this. One side squared equals the sum of the other two squared. I don't need that really. Minus twice the two letters you wrote down right before it times the cosine of the angle that's across from the letter we started with. We started with a C. What angle is across from C? Gamma. Gamma. Yep. Gamma. Okay. And 
that's the pattern for the law of cosines. One side squared equals the sum of the other two minus twice the other two cosine of the angle across from the letter you started. So it follows that same pattern no matter what letters you want to use to write. So let's say we started with a B squared. What would be the two letters here? A squared, a squared and then what? C squared. Plus C squared. So one side squared equals the sum of the other two minus what would come next? 2AC. Two, 2 times the letters you wrote down right before it. So 2AC. And then times the cosine. What's the angle across from the letter we started with? Beta. 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 Yep. So that's, it's not a different formula. It's exactly the same formula. You're just writing it with different letters. And we could start it with a squared, or we could start with h squared, or q squared, or r squared. You could start with any letter you want. What would be the other two letters here if we're sticking with a, b, and c? b squared and c squared. So b squared plus c squared. And then minus 2bc. 2 times the product of the letters you used right before it, times the cosine of Alpha. The angle across from the side you started with. Alpha. Okay, but notice every time I read the law of cosines, I just kept saying the pattern. I didn't actually use the letters. So one side squared, sum of the other two squared, minus twice the other two, cosine of the angle across from what you started with. The A, B, and C is just there for mental purposes, just to kind of keep it straight in your head. That's all of the A, B, and C. Okay, but that's the pattern. So any questions on that? All right. So let's try um, the first problem I, I wrote down. <clears throat> now, you don't need to sketch it to figure out that it's law of cosines. How can you tell by looking at the table? Yeah, not what it on this fold. Right, you don't have a full row. So you don't have a full row. This is definitely law of cosines. And you're missing a side. There's two types of problems with law of cosines. The one where you're missing a side, and the one where you have all the sides. If it's the one where you're missing a side, find the side first. That's what you have to do. You can find the angles in any order you want after. But if you don't find the side first, this it won't work. You'll, you'll run into a problem. So we have to pick a version of the law of cosines that has a in it, b in it, and gamma. The only three pieces of information we have. So which which version? C squared. One, two, or three. Which one? First one? Yeah, you have to use the first one. Okay. If I check off everything you know, you know A, you know B, you know A, you know B, and you know gamma. You know everything on the right hand side. That's perfect. Okay. So let's fill that in. C we don't know, and that's on the left. So C squared. Um, next thing is A squared. Um, what's A squared for? Four. Yep. And b squared? Nine. So that's nine. Minus two times a times b. Well, what's two times a? Four. four. And what's four times b? Twelve. Twelve. Twelve cosine gamma. Gamma is sixty. Uh, what can we do next on the right-hand side? We can combine like terms. Um, what are my like terms? Four and nine. Yes, just the 4 and the 9. 4 plus 9 gives me 13. 
Now you can't, you can't do 13 minus 12 because you have multiplication right here. You need to do multiplication before subtraction. Pen pens. So what's, what's the cosine of 60? 0.5. 0.5. So it really comes out nice this time. At least that part does. Cosine of 60 is a half. What's half of 12? 6. 6. Now you can do 13 minus 6. Oh. Hmm. What's 13 minus 6? 7. Seven. Seven. Now that that's not c. That's c squared. That's c squared. We want a number to put in this box, though. It's not seven. Square, square, square. We have to take the square root. And this is going to be an approximate answer because we're going to round it off. And how many decimal places do we uh, round to? Yep. I'm going to go with three. So square root of 7, 2.646. And that's how you use the law of cosines to find a side. Those are the steps. Maybe a couple of those steps you could have combined together, but that's how you do it. Any questions how we... Got C. Now, you do have more information about this triangle now. You have an extra side. Because of that extra side that you know, if you do it carefully and, and the right way, you could use law of signs to finish this problem because you have a full row in the table now. But there's something that can come up that I want to avoid. Okay, so what we're going to do is finish this with law of cosines, and we'll automatically get the answer that we're supposed to get. All right, so now um, let's find, it doesn't matter if we do alpha or beta. Uh, which one do we want to do? We're going to do beta. So that's going to be the second version. Let's fill in everything we got. Okay. What's b squared? Nine. A squared? Four. Four. And what's C squared? Seven. Seven. We have it right here. That was part of the work we did at the end of the last problem. Don't take 2.646 and square it. Because you're probably going to get like 6.999 or something like that. C squared is seven. Exactly. <coughs> Any question why I wrote 7 for c squared? OK. Uh, now I am going to need a calculator. 2 times a times c. Well, what's 2 times a? 4. four. four. I need 4 times c. What's 4 times 2.646? 10.584. 10 10.584. Cosine of, we're solving for beta. Okay. So notice a little bit different. This time the variable is on the right side. We need to move everything that's not the variable to the left. Um, any like terms on the right that I can combine? Four and seven. Yes, just the four and the seven. The negative 10 is multiplied. So we cannot subtract 10 from the four and the seven. What's 4 plus 7? 11. Now, if you're not sure what to do with this step, think of this same equation, but think of it in a simpler way. What you're solving is basically like this. 9 equals 11 minus 10, just keep the number simple, times something you don't know. This equation and that equation are the same setup. What would be your next step <coughs> in that equation to get x by itself? Subtract the 11. Right. You have to subtract the 11. You cannot do 11 minus 10 because the 10 is multiplied by something you don't know. <coughs> so 
minus the 11. Uh, 9 minus 11 is going to give me negative 2. Negative 2 equals negative 10.584 cosine beta. Okay. Now we have two steps left. The next thing is to get the negative 10 on the other side. How would you move the negative 10? Divide by. Yep. And what are you going to divide by? Negative 10.584. All that's gone. It's gone. And divide by negative 10.584. Anything on the left that cancels? The negatives. Yeah, we could just cross those out. Don't, don't even do that out. If you do that out and write a decimal, now you've already rounded it, and you're rounding again. Just, just leave it. 2 divided by 10.584 equals the cosine of beta. What's the last thing you have to get rid of? The cosine. You've got to get rid of the cosine, and then we will know beta. Um, what do we do on each side to get rid of it? Inverse cosine. Yep. Take the inverse cosine. And take the inverse cosine. And whatever that comes out to, that is our answer for beta. So inverse cosine of 2 divided by 10.584. 79.108. 79, perfect. 79.108. 79.108. Now we've got two out of three of the angles. So now the third angle is easy. What can we do to get the third angle with the two that we already have? Add them together from the minus 180. Yep, just subtract them from 180. So 79.108 minus 60. And we get 40.892. And that's how you use law of cosines um, to find an angle. So this was this was to find a side on the right. This is how you find an angle on the left. Notice when you're finding a side, you're never using inverse trig. You're using a square root at the end. When you're finding an angle, you are using inverse trig. Any questions on uh, a side angle side? Out of the two cases, I think this one is harder because you got to do a little of both. One time you got to find a side, the other time you have to find an angle. When you're dealing with side, 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 you're never finding a side. You're just finding angles the whole time. Since you know all the sides, you can find any angle that you want first. But how many times are you going to have to do law of cosines? At a minimum. Twice. You have to do it at a minimum twice. And you can get them completely separate from each other. You don't need one to get the other. Okay. If you really want it, you could do all three using law of cosines. And each one of them would be totally independent. So if you make a mistake on one, it won't mess up anything else in this kind of problem. But what I usually do is I use law of cosines to get two of them, and then I add it up and subtract from 180. So that means if I made a mistake on one of them, and I use that mistake, well, <coughs> I'm going to have another mistake. So let's we'll just go through it carefully. Um, we've already done law of cosines to find, what did we do, beta? Yeah, we did beta. So let's pick a different angle to find first. Uh, alpha or gamma? Alpha. Alpha. Okay. How does the law of cosines with, that has alpha in it look? What's the, what's the formula? So the side squared equals the sum of two sides? Yep, so which side specifically for alpha? 
Um, so what would go right here? Uh, a squared. A squared. Equals b squared plus c squared minus 2b squared, uh, 2bc uh, multiplied on cos of uh, alpha or fish. Okay. So that's your yeah yeah you're right. That's your form. <clears throat> now, when they give you side side side, they don't have to, but a lot of times the numbers are nice, so it does make the arithmetic easier <coughs> in this kind of problem. Awesome. So what's um, what's a squared? Sixteen. B squared? No. C squared? Thirty-six. Oh, eighteen. Wait, no, thirty-six. Two times B times C. Well, what's two times B? Six. six. Two times three. And then, so two times three is six. What's six times C? Thirty-six. Thirty-six. Cos fish. Now that's how I was Okay. Um, what's the next thing we can do there? Good. Add like terms. All right. What do you get when you combine like terms? You get 30, 45. 45. 45 minus 36 plus fish. Okay. Just for you, Jacob. Thank you. Next it helps step. me understand. Minus 45. Then you would, uh, minus the 45. So 16 minus 45 is negative 29. That's gone. So negative 29 equals negative 36. Okay, next up. Divide. Divide by 36. Divide by negative, negative, 36. negative 36. That's gone. And what happens on the left side? Kids up at negatives. Yep. Yeah. Don't worry about 29 over 36. Just leave that. But what do you do now? 29 over 36. Take the inverse uh, of cosine. Take inverse cosine on each side. Mm -hmm. yeah. Inverse and regular cosine cancel out. And up till now, that's exact. The answer is the inverse cosine of 29 over 36. We've done no rounding. Now we're going to round. So inverse cosine, 29 over 36. It doesn't matter that I didn't close my parentheses. 36.336. So 36.336. Okay. So now we've got one angle. We have to do law of cosines one more time to get one more angle. All right, so you want to do beta? Well, we did beta. How about let's try again? Let's try again. Um, that is what's that uh, formula? C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus two A B Okay, and now so I don't have to keep scrolling up and down to see the numbers. Um, what's C squared? 36. 36. A squared? 16. 16. And B squared? 9. And then what's 2 times 4 times 3? 24. 2 times 4 times 3 is how much? 24. 24. Cosine gamma. Okay. Combine your like terms. Uh, what do we get? 25. 25 minus 24 cosine gamma. Okay, um, next up. Subtract 25 from both sides. Subtract 25. 36 minus 25 gives me? 11. 11. Now there's two steps left. We gotta get rid of the number and the function. How do we get rid of the number on the right? If you divide negative 24 on both sides. Divide negative 24. That's gone. Again, don't do 11. I mean, if this was like you know, 5 divided by 10, 
then I maybe I'd write 25. But if it's 11 over 24, can't reduce it, just leave it. Okay. And last step. Inverse. Inverse. Cosine. 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 Of what? 11 over 24. Negative 24. Negative 24. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you put the negative in the top or bottom. It's the same thing. So inverse cosine of negative 11 over 24. It's 117 point, uh, well, it's going to round up, so we're going to say 280. 117, 280. Now, we found those answers completely separate. We did not use the 36 at all to get the 117. So if you made a mistake with the 36, you could still get the 117 right. Now, if you really wanted to be careful, you know, if you weren't sure of your answers, I would do law of cosines a third time to get beta. If you're really confident you did those two right, we could just add them up and subtract from one. So that's just for sake of time, that's how I'm going to do it. Take and subtract the 36 and subtract the 117. Now, if you ever get a negative answer when you do that, then you definitely did something wrong. No negative <coughs> angles in a um, track. So 26, 3, 8, 4. Okay. And that's how you, uh, that's how you solve a side, side, side problem. So now on the test, uh, they're all mixed. So the first thing you'll have to decide is, is it a law of sines problem? Or is it a law of cosines problem? What are the two types we learned today? Side, side, side. side. So we did the side angle side, the side, side, side. And the three types we did? Side angle angle. Side angle angle. Angle side angle. Angle side angle. Side side angle. Side side angle. Those are the only five types of problems you could ever have. There's no other. There's no other type. What about angle angle angle? You can't solve that. Now the side side angle is the one where you have to be aware of. Um, yes. Zero, one, and two solutions. Okay. Angle 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 is impossible because if I said to you, let's say I'm thinking of a triangle that has angles of 60, 60, and 60. It's equilateral. Mm. But do you know the sides? No. Could be 10, 10, 10, 50, 50, 50. You have to have at least one side, no matter what kind of problem you're trying to solve. So there is no other type you can make. Those are the five. All right. So let's finish up with this one. So we're going to find the distance between two points. Okay, like point A and point B. Kind of, it's going to be kind of like the lake problem. Um, actually, I don't know. We didn't do the lake problem. We did the ski lift we did problem. The we, yeah, we did the mountain, and we did the ski lift for homework, and then we did the airplane one. Um, so, never mind. We didn't do a lake one. So we've got two points A and B. And they're going to give us a diagram to help, help lay this out. But the idea is you've got points A and B across from each other. And then you have a surveyor standing at point C. So the two points in the surveyor make a triangle. Okay. The surveyor is in front of the two points. So the surveyor is looking, saying, OK, I need to know the distance from there over to there in front of me. Now, again, maybe for whatever reason, maybe there's a big lake right in front of him. And he's trying to get the distance across the lake. So from where he's standing on the edge of the lake, he can walk over to that side of the lake, and then the surveyor can walk over to the other side of the lake. So he's going to measure the distance from where they're standing to the two ends of the lake, and that will help us get the distance across the lake. That, that's the idea. 
But the point is, there's something in front of him that he just can't run a tape measure straight across. Okay, maybe it's like a lake would be something that could make it hard to use. Lakes. What? What's your obsession with lakes? Why, you don't like lakes? No, I love lakes. Oh, good. You should like this poem. I do. Yeah. It's got my seal of approval. Okay, so that's all the information, and we're going to have to make a picture. So A and B, mark the thing that we want to know the length of. And then we have two sides of the triangle, 50 and 70, and we have an angle. So we're going to try to find the third side in this triangle. Now, does it matter if A or B is 50 or 70? Um, well, we'll have, because it does say respectively. So when it says the two sides, A and B, and then it says 50 and 70, that's to A, because it comes first. Nice. That's to B, because it comes second. Now, we've got the, these two, two houses. Again, maybe the houses are on the edge of a lake. We just want to find the distance between them. But the point is, there's something, there's something in the way. So it could be a lake, or there could be something else in the lake. Oh, so oh, man, that's what a problem. the problem with trying to measure the distance between points A and B is we got we got giant crabs. So I go they're they're gonna they're gonna hurt me. We got poisonous tree frogs. So that's yeah, that's a problem. Don't mess with those. And we have the Easter Bunny. So I mean, no, no, give up on it. You can't just run it. Is there's a lot of danger between A and B. That's what we're getting at. So. We're going to use trig to be safe. Trig, trig equals safe. Right? It's going to help us to find things and keep us out of the danger. That's what trig does. Now, the person that's measuring this is going to be standing down here. Um, I didn't have a surveyor, but I did have a trench soldier. Oh, that's good. That's, that's the surveyor. That's, that's close, close enough. That's going to be the same. <laughs> Tree frogs and Easter bunnies and crabs. You know? Even he doesn't want to mess with that. So he's, he's using trick, but you know, he's safe. He's safe. He's far enough away. He should be all right. Yeah. Oh, that Easter bunny. So here's our. I can get through the entire world in one night. I don't want to have as many Okay, So here's our triangle. What's the angle that they tell us? 70 degrees. And which angle is that? Angle A, C, B. Angle A, C, B. So that's the angle down here. So we have the angle. Now they tell us the surveyor is able to walk safely from C to A and then from C to B. C to B is a tricky one. You get close to that bunny. What's, how long is C to B? C to B is 70. C to B is 70 feet. The other one's 50. Just a coincidence. They're both 70. And then A to C is how long? 50. So first of all, what kind of triangle do we have? Equilateral. I'm joking, guys. I hope. So what, what, what case is it? This is the side angle side. Side angle side. Law of Okay. So what we want to find is x. Okay, I'm not going to call it. I've already used a, b, and c. So it doesn't make sense to use a, b, or c again. So let's call it x. How would the law of cosines start out if we're trying to find x? What would be the first thing we write down? Is it not equation? Well, it's the, the pattern of the equation, but we don't have exactly the same names of things. But it's the pattern. You would start off with x. Start off with x. And then it would be x squared. X squared. Right? X squared. And then it's uh, 50, squared. 50 squared. 50 squared. 70 squared. Yep. Plus 70 squared. I'm just going to move it down a little bit. Yeah, we don't want to ruin the trench coat. Right? So 50 squared plus 70 squared plus 70 squared. And then we okay. use minus uh, two, two times seven eight. Yeah. Times 50, 50 times 70. 70. And then it's the cosine of 70. 
cosine of the angle yeah. across from the side you started. Seven. Okay. You just have to figure out what that is. Now, some of this we can we can do. Um, what's fifty times fifty? Twenty five hundred. So that's twenty five hundred. What's seventy times seventy? Forty nine hundred. Forty nine hundred. Okay, so twenty five hundred plus forty nine hundred. What's two times fifty? And what's a hundred times seven? How much? Well, a hundred times seventy is seventy hundreds, which is another way of saying seven thousand. We normally, I mean, some people say it like that, like when you get like 7200s, 7200 or 7200, same thing. All right, so 7700, 7000, cosine 70. Okay, what about um, 2500 plus 4900? 7400. So that's 7400. And that's pretty much what we can do without starting to round things off. So at this point, I would just figure out how to get x by itself. Take the square root of it. Take the square root. So x is exactly the square root of 7,400 minus 7,000 cosine 70. Oh, boy. And that's exact. We haven't done any rounding. Now, now we'll round it. 7,400 minus 7,000 cosine 7. And what did people get when they type that in? 70.752. 70.752. Yep. That's the distance between points A and B. So, 70.752. And the unit on that? Feet. Feet. Another second. Yeah. Another Almost an equilateral. Thank goodness he had not did not have to mess with these. Nope. Trade trade was very helpful. Uh -huh. Man, buddies are rad. Uh, have you guys never seen Monty Python? So any question? Any question? On that? <laughs> they are vicious. All right. So that <coughs> finishes up uh, all the log signs and log cosines material for this week. So homework on page 274 is 9, 11, 13, 17, 25, and 27. Right. And we'll take a look at uh, the homework tomorrow, and then we'll do the, um, the review. Well, I guess since this is the last video for the week, I can put the test topics. So the test topics, law of science, and law of cosines. I mean, that's, are, that's a lot. That's, a, that's, that's what we're doing. So there's probably three of each. I don't know if I can answer that. That is too many topics. That's it. Those are the topics. This is ridiculous. Is the Easter Bunny going to pop up with those topics?